welcome back to beyoungministry.blogspot.com and to another podcast out of the second chapter of Galatians. We're in Galatians chapter 2 verses 11 through 14 today, which reads, When Cephas came to Antioch, I opposed him to his face, because he stood condemned. For before certain men came from James, he used to eat with the Gentiles, but when they arrived, He began to draw back and separate himself from the Gentiles because he was afraid of those who belonged to the circumcision group. The other Jews joined him in his hypocrisy so that by their hypocrisy even Barnabas was led astray. When I saw that they were not acting in line with the truth of the gospel, I said to Cephas in front of them all, You are a Jew, yet you live like a Gentile and not like a Jew. How is it then that you force Gentiles to follow Jewish customs? Again, that's Galatians chapter 2, verses 11 through 14. In this text, we learn that it is possible for the believer in Christ to contradict the gospel through the way we live our lives and the way we treat others. Peter did this by requiring new converts to be circumcised in order to be acceptable. In verse 11, Cephas, which is the Aramaic equivalent to Peter, travels to Antioch to visit a very healthy church. Paul informs informs us he opposed Peter because before certain men came from James, he used to eat with Gentiles. Peter was a Jew who was enjoying the freedom that the gospel brings into a believer's life, particularly freedom to eat with Gentiles. In addition, he was requiring that Gentiles become Jews by being circumcised and keeping certain ceremonial laws which were a part of the culture that God gave to the Jews. There's a background story which explains Peter's change. As recorded in Acts chapter 10, Peter shares the gospel with a Gentile Randomly, it seems. The guy's name was Cornelius. Immediately afterwards, God gives Peter a vision. And in the vision is a sheet which is lowered down from heaven with all kinds of animals that the Old Testament pronounces unclean. Then the voice of God says, Peter, rise, kill, and eat. But Peter responds, No, Lord. For I have never eaten anything that is uncommon or unclean. And the voice came back, What God has cleansed, you must not call common. Of course here, God was referring to the Gentiles who were becoming believers in the Lord Jesus. In Galatians 2.12, we discover the Jewish leaders in Jerusalem criticized Peter saying, why did you go to uncircumcised men and eat with them? Peter's defense is recorded in Acts chapter 11 and verse 17. So if God gave them the same gift he gave us, who believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I to think I I could stand in God's way? When Peter ate with the Gentile Christians in Antioch, he was enjoying one of the many results of the gospel. He experienced the freedom which enables us to love others freely. But then certain Jews came to Antioch from James who was in Jerusalem and Peter feared this group. And in a moment of weakness, he cut off his fellowship with the Gentile believers. He literally stiff-armed the Gentiles. In verse 13, we read, The other Jews joined him in his hypocrisy, so that by their hypocrisy even Barnabas was led astray. Peter and Barnabas and the others sought to avoid rejection from the Jerusalem Jewish Christians at the expense of their principles. At the expense of the lifestyle freeing change that the gospel brings into the life of a believer. Finally, according to verse 14, Paul confronts Peter, who was not living by the truth of the gospel. 
You see, the blessings of the gospel are only received by faith in the Lord Jesus, not by works of the law. We do not attain the blessings of the gospel by being good enough. We attain forgiveness and joy and peace and power through daily reliance upon Jesus Christ who loved us and gave himself for us. And that faith creates a lifestyle that is in step with the truth of the gospel. A lifestyle that says to people, I love you no matter what. Hey, I trust these blog spots are helpful to you in your walk with the Lord. If, if I could be of any help to you, feel free to email me at beyoungministry at gmail.com. Hey, have a great day.